Anyone familiar with combat sports knows that size matters, and the bigger they are, the more advantage they have in the ring or octagon. A boxer or an MMA fighter with a height and reach advantage can always tag the opponent before the opponent tags him. Therefore, combat sports athletes cut enormous weight during a fight week. What weight do you walk around at? Uh, about one. If I'm completely just kind of like bullshitting, doing whatever, I've right. gotten to as high as like 195. Now, uh, when but, you're in training, like when you get, like say you're four weeks out, mm -hmm. where are you at? Uh, 85 usually. 185? Yeah, 85. So eight. you're cutting a lot of weight, man. Although there are categories where fighters should be more or less the same weight on a fight night, those athletes who cut the most weight usually have the reach and power advantage over their fellow competitors, especially against those who fight at their natural weight. Meet Jacob Baby Jake Matlala, the 4'10 boxer who overcame his height disadvantage to become the shortest boxing world champion ever. He wasn't just a Cinderella story in boxing. By the time he retired, the South African held an impressive record of 53 wins and 13 losses, winning four world championships in the process. The heart and determination Matlala showed during his era are incredible. He is one of the few South African champions and was admired by Nelson Mandela himself. He stood 1.47 meters in his socks. Watched by the late former president Mandela and Hollywood actor Will Smith, Baby Jake brought the curtain down on his 22-year professional boxing career on March the 3rd, 2002. We will look at who Jacob Matlala was. WBO junior flyweight champion of the world and the challenger, Jacob Baby Jay Matlala. And how his career taught people not to give up in pursuit of ambitions despite the apparent disadvantages. Matlala was born in 1962 in Medellin's Johannesburg as the only child of a driver and a cook. As iron sharpens iron, his father was an aspiring boxer who pursued his son into the sport and made Jacob passionate about boxing. The South African had two apparent shortcomings as a boxer. He was tiny and his arms were short. Being only four fed 10 tall, it almost seemed like Matlala would play tennis on a ping pong table. Also, being that tiny brought another flaw, the power factor. As he lacked a real punch, Baby Jake said he was never involved in a street fight because he was so likable that nobody tried to bully him. He was successful as a student, and after finishing high school at the top of his class, Jacob completed a BTCom degree at one of the leading South African universities. At 10 years old, he started boxing as a fun hobby, but eventually became a challenging puzzle for anyone winning 198 bouts out of 199 as an amateur boxer. WBU junior flyweight title. It was a fitting end to an illustrious career that has earned Matala legendary status in South African boxing. However, despite the small stature and obvious disadvantages, Baby Jake was so passionate about boxing that he would not let those factors affect him from pursuing his dream. Therefore, he decided to turn professional in 1979. Fame came to Matlala late in his career, but when it did, he embraced it and used it to draw attention to charities and other deserving causes. He exuded natural warmth and became one of South Africa's most popular sports people with his diminutive size and glowing smile. Baby Jake began his boxing career in 1980. In Port Elizabeth, under the guidance of Theo Mathembu, the South African earned a fourth-round victory over Fraser Plachi. Matlala earned a record of seven, two before fighting Dexter Dlamini with the Transvaal light flyweight title on the line. He won the bout via TKO, as well as his next fight against Kirk Morris. On February 26, 1983, Jacob Matlala fought Mivaleli Luzifo for the South African light flyweight title. But uh, this is a man who's held Bantam and flyweight titles for Australia. Uh, good little the flurry of punches come in there from uh, Jake Matlala. And won the contest via TKO. Baby Jake kept the momentum and earned another KO victory against Martin Nkokoto. But then, on October 14th, he lost the South African light flyweight title in a rematch against Mivaleli Luzifo. 
Matlala won the next three bouts before he was matched against Jacob Mazibuko for the Transvaal light flyweight title on the line. He won on points and defended the belt four times before losing to Vuyani Nene on March 15, 1986. Look at how Matlala is taking a lot of punishment from the South Pole. One of the crowdy, crafty South Poles from the Eastern Cape, in fact. Matlala went two, two in the next four fights, two of which were caused by the same fighter, Vuyani Nene. This fighter turned out to be Matlala's kryptonite as he was three. 0 against the South African. Although Baby Jake won his next three fights against Jacob Mazibuko, Vumile Gomo, and Daniel Ward, his kryptonite, Vuyani Nene, stopped Jacob's three-fight winning streak by defeating Matlala via unanimous decision. It seemed that Baby Jake was not bothered by the four defeats caused by the same person. He went on a fantastic streak, winning ten fights and losing only one, before he was scheduled against Dave McCauley at Maysfield Leisure Center in Belfast, with the International Boxing Federation World Flyweight title on the line. Although the South African lost this fight via KO, two rounds completed, and uh, well, the little man probably... Uh... He rebounded by winning his next three contests via unanimous decision. On May 15, 1993, Baby Jake was scheduled to face Pat Clinton for the World Boxing Organization World Flyweight title and won the bout via TKO. Matlala defended the belt against Luigi Camputaro. With this guy for half a minute of the three minute rounds, but he can't keep fighting like this Camputaro. It's uh, Matlala's fight. He's winning most of these rounds and just chopping away at this guy. Another good round for the champion. And both of them looking a little. And Francis Ampofo, putting enormous pressure on them, winning the contest due to corner retirement. I think he has. The challenger is not coming out. It's all over. He defended his title for a third time against Pretty Boy Lucas, but then was dethroned by Alberto Jimenez, who beat the South African before the final bell. Now look at this. On the new WBO flyweight the belts, champion, and, uh, Alberto Jimenez! I think we must... On August 26, 1995, Baby Jake reclaimed his belt when he defeated Francisco Mendoza on points. He then faced Paul Weir in Kelvin Hall, Glasgow. I'll pick it up points with his longer arms and getting out of trouble. Where he earned another victory and won the immediate rematch against Weir via TKO. 38 to Baby Jake Matlala. Ladies and gentlemen, Matlala is the winner. Well, that's uh, exactly what Good Luck Marshall would have to happen. And that's why I couldn't understand. In the next bout, Matlala won a close split decision against Mickey Cantwell and TK owed Michael Carbajal in the next fight. Do you throw punches, George, just to land them without worrying about whether they're hard punches? You gotta do it, especially when you're fighting a guy who's not gonna invest anything in, but let's see what's going Once on. Once again, Richard Steele is taking Carbajal to the corner. On November 15, 1997, the South African was scheduled to fight Luis Doria with the International Boxing Association World Light Flyweight title on the line. Baby Jake had another flawless performance, earning a TKO victory, before successfully defending his title against Jose Victor Burgos. The South African defended his belt again against Rafael Orozco before he was scheduled against Masibulele Makepula for the vacant World Boxing Organization World Light Flyweight title. Matlala lost that bout, as well as the next fight for the World Boxing Union flyweight title against Peter Kulshaw. Nevertheless, on February 17, 2001, Baby Jake was given another shot at the vacant World Boxing Union light flyweight title, this time against Todd Maklem. Many high points in his career, but the high point really had to be that win against Michael Carberall. As both fighters tee off on the ropes now. Matlala implemented his game plan better and beat the opponent via TKO. Winning a South African record fourth world title, the new WPU Junior Flyweight Champion of the World, South Africa's Baby Jake Matlala.
a victory that earned him another title on his resume. He ended his spectacular career by defending his belt twice, TKOing Mickey Cantwell in the first title defense and scoring a stunning KO victory against Juan Herrera. Being only 4'10 with a short reach is not only disadvantageous when controlling the distance, EB Jake Matlala, 4'10, the world's smallest champion, but, he... but also, the power factor was not in Jake's favor. Due to obvious reasons, Matlala had to create a unique boxing style that could compensate for the disadvantages and be lethal and effective when going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the opponents. Although he did not possess one-punch knockout power in his hands, he recompensed it with the consistency of volume punching. He was taking the middle of the ring and closing the distance, repeatedly throwing a barrage of combos. Baby Jake tended to keep the opponents on the back foot against the ropes where he was working their bodies before finding his way to the head. Keeping them at a distance was not an option because the opponents could always tag Jacob before he would tag them. In Mike Tyson's style, Jake was getting into the opponent's face. Can you feel that? That's different Challenging him to a brawl, he was constantly throwing left and right and was not afraid to take a punch. Although he looked like a hobbit, Matlala could absorb much damage and keep coming like Michael Myers. Although the South African was not gifted with size, nature granted him great stamina, heart, and endurance. One of his favorite combos was a big right overhand and left hook to the body. Being a natural warrior with a great chin, Matlala did not have to do crazy head movements to avoid strikes but rather stayed composed with his guard up, absorbing punches to the gloves before delivering some of his own. Judging by his record, this style turned out to be a hard puzzle to solve for any professional boxer he fought. Later in his life, the South African boxer caught pneumonia and was admitted to the hospital numerous times over the course of a few years. On December 7, 2013, at Charlotte Maxique Johannesburg Academic Hospital, Matlala was pronounced dead. The New Covenant Church escorted his coffin into the Rima Church Auditorium. He left an eternal legacy behind and became one of Nelson Mandela's favorite fighters. Only four days out of prison, when they asked Mandela about his favorite boxer, he simply replied, Oh, it has to be Baby Jake. Baby Jake Matlala met former President Nelson Mandela almost a decade before his retirement when he was nominated for a Presidential Sports Award. Beaming with happiness, having been unhappy for the previous hour, the two friends seemed to relish each other's company sometimes joking about their size disparity. He always gets a bigger cheer, Nelson Mandela used to say about the pint-sized boxer, joking that he never enjoyed being in his company. They both passionately loved boxing. Tall and short in their structure and had strong punches. Baby Jake died two days after Mandela, who attended Matlala's last bout in 2002. They became so close that the boxer gave the former president one of his belts. Another great fighter has died. Go well, little man. Um, well, I've come here today to pay my respects to a personal hero of mine, baby Jake. You'll be missed, wrote on Twitter. Jake's former promoter, Rodney Berman, but Lala's inspirational life story is straight out of a Hollywood movie about how an underdog can prevail over obstacles and pursue his dream, nevertheless. All things considered, being David in a sport full of Goliaths. And succeeding in overcoming disadvantages to become a four-time world champion. is admirable and deserves all the respect.